Forkfest.party. It's gonna be a party. They say you're not supposed to plant your dandelions until a few weeks before last frost, which I understand is June 1st in New Hampshire. This is May 2nd. Uh, but uh, these are not my dandelions. I didn't grow them. They kind of grew on their own. And I'm trying to learn how to dry them so that I can make sort of dried foods out of them that can be kept for months as opposed to days or weeks without refrigeration. <laughs> Maybe I'm going a little overboard now. They say, by the way, that you are supposed to avoid washing uh, plants that you're trying to uh, dry. Uh, avoid washing them before doing this, but I just couldn't. There was just too much dirt. There's too many other leaves from plants that I have no idea what they are. I had to go ahead and wash these, and I'm just going to take my chances. And <laughs> they're not very big chances, and uh, see what happens. Won't be needing you. You don't look like a dandelion. Even this part can be eaten, although it may need to be steamed first. And it can be used for making dandelion tea. The whole thing is edible. And replaceable, but I wonder what's in it. I wonder what's not in it that we need. By the way, it seems like they, my impression is they, they grow really well, uh, like under leaves for some reason, even though they're supposed to need a lot of sunlight. I can thank my landlord, Lauren Canario, uh, the famous civil disobedience activist for finding and handing me the dandelions and pulling them out of the ground. I guess they, they grew really well next to uh, their goldfish pond. I don't know, like I say, maybe I'm overdoing it. People didn't starve in Venezuela, so they're probably not going to starve here either. But you never know. And I found myself a little bit obsessed with the idea of being able to produce something, you know, around the neighborhood while so much production is being interrupted. Maybe I should be more obsessed and obsessed about more or different things. So, a day later, the, uh, the bottoms of these dandelions are still, uh, they're still moist. However, this part up here, you can almost hear it. It feels like, uh, feels just like the, uh, you know, the, sort of the dried beef jerky or the dried, uh, the dried tomatoes you might find in a, in a grocery store. So I'm guessing those, uh, you know, when they get that dry, that should be edible for two or three months without having to refrigerate it or anything. At least two or three months. I mean, it's two or three years with the store-bought stuff. Let's see about this. It's an unusually dry day in New Hampshire. So, uh, and it's about 5 p.m. It's had about 24 hours to dry. So I don't know that normally we would get such good results. Uh, and we haven't gotten such good results on this side. Some of this stuff up here is still a little bit damp. But I better go check the weather. Make sure it doesn't rain tonight. I really want to be doing something to reduce my burden on the stores and on the supply chain. And, uh, you know, at least this is concrete. I've put dandelions in smoothies. It works okay. Works fine, actually. Putting them in uh, salads is not fantastic, but it's okay. <laughs> Sounds like the Siege of East Mostar. Actually, someone's practicing now, firing. Just a few seconds after I told you about the, uh, the backfiring motorcycle. Maybe you could hear it just a second ago. You've probably heard of Porkfest, but have you heard of Forkfest? It's a decentralized alternative. 
It's also at Rogers Campground at a slightly different time. You don't even need a ticket. Visit ForkFest.party. It's gonna be a party.